I'm going to focus on the role of the electric potential difference. This will help us intuit the problem in a more graphical visual way, and it'll guide us in solving it incrementally using Ohm's law. Now what I always do in these type of problems is I take these circuits and I just grab them and I just rotate them and draw them in 3D. So what we have here is a flattened version of this circuit diagram looking at it from the side. What we're going to plot is the potential at each point in the circuit diagram in the upward direction. We're going to start always at the negative terminal of the battery, which is going to be, we'll just place it at right where the level is of the circuit, so right at zero here. And then at the battery, it's going to increase by as many volts as the battery is. So I'm just going to make a really big jump here at the battery. Okay, and across each wire, the voltage will not change. Voltages or potentials do not change across wires, so I'm just going to draw it straight there. In other words, the height of this is the same as we walk around across the wires. Now when we get to resistors, the potential will drop a little bit. Again, along the wires, the potential is not changing, so when I go along this wire, I need to have the same height on this vertical wall here. Okay, now here, let's, let's just think about this for a moment. Eventually, this potential has to get back down to zero over here. And we know that it can't change along this wire. Here, the potential has to be the same along the wire here. So certainly, across this, it's got to drop back down all the way to zero here. However, on this part of the loop, it has to drop some along that resistor and some along that resistor. So we can't drop it all to zero here. We have to incrementally go down. Now, what this diagram makes clear is that, first of all, the voltage is not something that flows or moves. It's a property of the circuit diagram at each point. And then the second thing it makes clear is that uh, you can determine which way the current is flowing by just imagining the current as a ball rolling down these ramps. So anytime you go um, you know, across a resistor, you, the current flows in the direction that the ramp decreases. The only place where it goes up the ramp is at the battery because the battery is pushing the current up the potential using chemical forces. The first question says we want to rank the potentials in the circuit diagram at all the points A through G. Now our voltage map pretty much just makes this entirely clear for us where the voltage is highest or where the potential is highest and where it's lowest. It's of course the highest right after the battery, so G is a point of the highest potential. It drops a little bit at D, so we know we're going to get down to D a little bit later right here. Um, in addition, it doesn't drop at all from B to C. So D, C, and B all have the same potential. They're the same height in these orange lines here. So D, I'll put D, C, and B, they're all at the same potential here. Now, it also makes clear what's happening between A and F. This is a little tricky if you just look at the diagram directly. In this diagram, we have uh, B and C, and we have a drop from B and C down to F on this side and down to A on this side. However, we know that because we have to drop extra potential here, that the, the drop down to A is less than the drop down to F. F is at zero, and A is a little bit higher. So the next one down is A, and then F and E are both at the bottom here. Question two, what is the current at point B in the circuit? Now there's two ways to solve these type of circuit, circuit diagrams, either by drawing equivalent circuits, which works well when you have a single battery, or by using Kirchhoff's laws. And those are more versatile, uh, but they involve a lot of tedious algebra, and it can be long. So you want to try to avoid using them when you can. In our case, we have a single battery, so we're going to reduce this circuit using equivalent circuits. And then from there, we work backwards to find the current at point B. The point of this procedure is to redraw this circuit with only a single resistor that represents the combined resistance of all the resistors in the circuit. You're going to do this by determining at each step whether these two resistors you're combining are in parallel or in series. Now, one common misconception in these problems is that whenever resistors are drawn parallel, they are in parallel. In the sense of a circuit, that's not always the case. For example, R1 and R3 they look like they're in parallel here, but if you look at our voltage map, which makes it very clear looking at our voltage map, R3 certainly has a bigger voltage drop across it than R1. And the reason is because voltage has to drop between, uh, across R2, which is between these two resistors. So R1 and R3 are not in parallel. However, R1 and R2, they are in series. And you know they're in series whenever they're on the same branch, and you can get from one resistor to the second one without crossing any forks in the circuit. So we're going to combine those first um, into our first diagram. Series resistors are easy when you combine them. You just add up the resistances. So in this case, R1 plus R2 is R1, R, R1, 2, which is 6 ohms. Now again, these three resistors look like they're in parallel because they're drawn in parallel. But just to check this, we're going to draw a small voltage map for this guy, just like we did over here. OK, I've started it off for you. We know that across the battery, the voltage has to rise to 10 volts. And then it's going to stay the same across the wires. Once it gets to the first resistor, it's going to drop. We don't know how much, but I'll just drop it. Then it's going to stay, this, stay the same across these wires until it gets to these two resistors. Now, on the other side of these two resistors, 
they both have to uh, meet up to zero volts over here, where the negative end of the battery is. So we know that they have to make up the full difference. These guys both have to drop down to zero. Now looking at this voltage map, we see two things. First of all, R12 and R3 had the same voltage drop across them. They started at the same potential and both ended up at zero. However, R4 is not necessarily in parallel with these two because the voltage drop here could be bigger or smaller and it could be independent of these guys. So in other words, R12 and R3 are in parallel, but these guys are not in parallel with R4. And you see the reason for this is the same as it was over here. There's a battery in between these guys that puts a potential difference across them, similar to what the resistor R2 is doing in that case. So to combine these, we have to combine R12 and R3 using the parallel law. And then finally, R123 and R4 are in series because they're on the same branch. Uh, in other words, you can get from R4 to R123 without crossing any, any forks in the circuit. So we'll combine those in series. The equivalent resistance of the full circuit is 5 ohms, from which we can now apply Ohm's law to find the current through the voltage source. So now that we have the current through the battery, we're going to go backwards to find the current at point B using Ohm's law and our voltage maps. So we know that the current in the battery is 2 amps. Since this, since this is a single loop and there's no forking, you're not forking off in other branches, then the current everywhere in the circuit is 2 amps. So the, in particular, the current is 2 amps through that resistor 4, which if we use Ohm's law, we can then use to find the potential drop across that resistor. All right, so the potential drop across resistor 4 is 6 volts. And the nice thing about our voltage map is we can actually use this quantity to immediately find out what the voltage drop is across another resistor. We have a 10 volt difference here, so the battery is 10 volts, okay? So you're at 10 volts here, and then at that resistor you drop by 6 volts. This is resistor 4. So you drop from 10, you drop by 6 volts down to 4. So now you're at 4 volts over here, and you know that you have to get back down to 0 across that resistor. So across resistor 3, certainly the voltage drop has to be 4 volts because you're going from 4 down to 0. So that immediately tells us that um, the voltage across resistor 3 is 4 volts. Now once you have that, you can once again use Ohm's law to figure out what the current is through that resistor. We get that the current through the, the resistor 3 is 1.33 amps. So we're just going to kind of move back one more step to the original diagram and use that, idea, uh, use that quantity to figure out what the current is through point B. So we have two amps coming out of the battery, which we solved for in the first step. That two amps stays two amps because you haven't reached any forks in the circuit. Once you get to right here, the current has to fork into these two branches. Through resistor 3, it's 1.33 amps. So the remainder of the incoming two amps has to go through resistor uh, through this branch over here. In other words, uh, two amps minus the 1.33 is 0.67 amps through point B. Okay, now for the last question, it says, what is the voltage drop across resistor 1? And we can basically solve that immediately. We know that the current going through this branch is 0.67 amps. Now the current going through here, of course, doesn't change because you're not crossing any forks in the circuit. So 0.67 amps, 0.67 amps, 0.67 amps through R1. We can solve using Ohm's law in one step to find the voltage drop across that resistor. So the answer to the final question is the voltage drop across resistor 1 is 2.67 volts. Okay, so we're going to end there. I just want to leave you guys with one last thought. Whenever you get these kind of problems with a single battery, always draw the voltage map first. It'll help you intuit and graphically guide you as you're working through the problem.